Hello everyone and welcome to another live Unity uh, training. My name is Mike Geig. Today we are talking about this concept of creative prototyping, right? And what we want to do is we want to see what we can build with Unity without doing a whole bunch of code, without having a whole bunch of custom assets, uh, just to, to develop an idea to talk a little bit about pre-production and the phases of pre-production and, you know, the sort of stuff that we can make uh, within Unity here fairly easily, you know, fairly quickly. So we're going to be talking about this uh, concept of the Neon Project. You might have seen it before, but basically, uh, let's let's take a look. Before I forget, I just want to say that if you have any questions, comments, uh, whatever, feel free to uh, follow us or message us on Twitter, at uh, Unity3D, at The Ant Ranch, at Matt Beerfish, and at Mike Geig, which is me. So if you have any questions or anything during this, after this, whatever, you know, just uh, reach out and let us know. Okay, so I have this project, this neon project, and, and I'm loading into this scene. And so basically the concept is we wanted to see what was possible if we just took a bunch of stuff from the asset store. And I, I think all said and done, this whole thing was done with around I don't know, $200 worth of assets from the asset store to see what we could build, to see if we could creatively prototype an idea or a concept for a game. And so this is what we've got. Now, it doesn't look like much right now, so don't, don't worry about that. But we have this scene, we have some of these buildings from a sci-fi pack, we got some weird grass and then this sort of skybox here. And we're gonna see how it all comes together. But one of the neat things that we're gonna notice is how we can use and reuse assets to sort of block out levels and come up with this, this look and feel and this, this sort of idea. So we have these buildings here. You'll, you'll see these again, don't worry about it. Uh, we've got this sort of like, you'll see this one a lot. You'll see a lot of these, you know, a lot. And, uh, and we're gonna see exactly what's talking about, what we're talking about. And we can use this concept here, these, these sort of items, and we're going to begin blocking out a level and we're going to talk about how this would fit into a sort of creative prototyping workflow. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, come down here into this sort of little corridor we've got right here. So we have this little corridor here, and this is kind of the main focal area of the scene. This is where we're gonna be setting up our props, we're gonna be getting our look and feel, sort of the emotions, the color schemes, we're gonna be building some concept art, all of that from just this little corridor right here. And the neat thing is, is right now, this is mostly just cubes. We've got a lot of, of Unity cubes, here, right? Nothing spectacular. Cubes with just some texturing on them. And then we've got a whole bunch of these little game objects. Like for instance, uh, this game object right here, in case you're thinking, hey, that looks familiar. Well, it certainly does. That is that building right there uh, that has just sort of been shrunken down and smashed on the side of the building. We got quite a few of those. There's another set of those right here. So just a lot of kind of this, I don't know, sort of trickery that goes into to doing this, right? So we're not really, you know, we're not really working with final art assets. Uh, like it said, you know, in the title, this is creative prototyping. We're trying to come up with an idea to prove the validity of an idea before we spend a lot of time and money uh, working, you know, to create final assets and stuff like that. Because, you know, this may not, uh, from an art, our, uh, our architecture standpoint, from an artistic standpoint, from a design standpoint, this may not end up being something that, you know, we, we want to go into production or whatever. So we want to try the idea out. Now, that's not to say that what we're doing here is going to be wasted effort, right? So I got some cubes and whatever, and these aren't final assets per se. Uh, that's not necessarily to, you know, going to make this, uh, you know, an effort that's wasted. One of the neat things that we can do now, and I, I, we just had a live uh, training about this, a live session about this, is that we can do things like, you know, obviously work with primitives. We can work with tools like ProBuilder, right, to, to build up scenes and like that. We can use uh, the new DCC import where we can take these prototype assets and round trip them into Maya or 3D Studio Max, uh, replace them with final assets, and then come back into Unity and, and all of those assets will be back where we want them to be, you know, in the in the correct spots with the, the right rotations and scaling and stuff. So we can kind of do a one-to-one -one replacement of all these prototypes, right, when we have final stuff in place. So it's kind of a neat workflow that allows us to really uh, get a lot out of our prototypes and, and again, kind of start to finish build uh, a concept. Now I'm going to get rid of this little blue box here. Uh, it's just uh, one of these gizmos that needs to be turned off as soon as I can find it here. There we go. All right. So that was just bugging me. All right. So let's get down to it. I've talked enough about creative prototyping and this and that. Let's actually see some stuff.
All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is obviously I'm gonna turn on scene lighting because that helps a ton. You know, without scene lighting, it's nice and bright and easy to place objects and stuff, but we can turn scene lighting on, and there we go. So we already got a little bit of mood. Now, I've had some people ask me in the past about uh, the lighting so far in here, and I'm actually gonna also turn down these 3D gizmos. There we go. So the lighting is nothing too spectacular. This is being done with the uh, progressive uh, uh, light mapper preview here with some basic settings and stuff so nothing too extreme and that's just been baked and we just get some color and whatnot from that so people had asked me in the past about uh, the light baking and stuff and so i just wanted to point that out so i've turned on scene lighting now i have this thing that i call control board this is just a script that just allows me to turn on and off a whole bunch of game objects at once uh, and really all it is is just it just turns on components and stuff like that this is just one place that i can do that but uh so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to turn on some some scattering and if i want to see what that scattering is it's actually this atmospheric scattering deferred here on the camera uh, which is part of uh, unity's atmospheric scattering package uh, which is available online and i also have links here in the video at the bottom where it says session links for the atmospheric lighting and stuff like that, all the stuff that I'm using here. So all the stuff that I'm using, you know, you can get, it's on the asset store, it's, it's uh, or one of the Unity assets or whatever. So there's atmospheric scattering, uh, and you can see here, that's just kind of adding a haze or a fog to that. And this is good, because I want to talk a little bit about the idea. What we really want to do is we want to build a scene, uh, not only just this sci-fi building corridor sort of stuff, but we want to give the idea of it being sort of cold and dark and rainy and wet and damp with, you know, a lot of fog and mist. And, you know, maybe like a, a Blade Runner-esque or cyberpunk-esque whatever. And so all of the effects that we're going to be building with are going to be applied uh, towards that idea, right? So we, we want this fog, which is going to, catch some light in the distance, give us this nice sort of haze or mist effect, uh, or that's our scattering. We're going to turn on fog, and fog is just going to be nice. Again, it's going to catch a lot of light and color, and we'll see, you know, where that light's coming from here in a second and how that works. But so the fog is going to, again, work to sort of give us that idea of it being, you know, foggy, misty, rainy, and whatever. we got water all over the ground, things look slick and wet and, and whatnot. And so... You know, we're just sort of playing into that idea, right, of, of this sort of, this wet, dark, futuristic. We want a lot of bright lights, but a lot of really deep shadows and stuff like that. And that's sort of this concept, and we're going to see how we can achieve that. All right, so now if I look at the ground here, since everything is wet, you know, we got some, some water reflection. I believe the ground is just a, a standard shader material, um, the actual, like, wet ground, not the skybox. i got to find it here. I might not be able to click through to it. Yeah, anyway, I'm, I'm ending up clicking on this decal instead. But uh, but at any rate, uh, the ground is just a, the standard shader here that, that's got some reflection to it. And so we're getting this sort of wet looking reflection, but the result is it's looking very pixelated, right? It's very just these sort of like scattered points and it's not that good looking. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to turn on some post-processing effects. So here I'm just gonna click my turn on post-processing button. But what is, that really does is that just turns on this component on my camera called a post-process layer. Now the post-processing layer doesn't have any of the actual effects on it. It just allows me to see post-processing. So it says, hey camera, you can see post-processing. So here on this layer, I have some anti-aliasing. And we have a few different types. I can do fast, approximate, or whatever, but I'm gonna do temporal. And so I'll, I'll turn temporal on here and I'll hit play. And now uh, when I move around, you can see those lights really smooth out. So again, without that post-processing, very jagged, very, you know, pixelated light reflections there, and then with it. Okay, so we definitely want that post-processing on there, right? It certainly helps out with that. Um, so there we go. We've got that, which is cool, all right? So that's just a nice beginning effect there. And so I see in my reflections a lot of, like, lights and stuff that I don't have. And that's because we're just using a, a cube map for these reflections. That's just a stand-in. We're actually going to replace that here uh, quite shortly. So check this out. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my control, and I've got uh, these uh, game objects called emissives. I'll turn those on. And what they are are these just sort of cubes with an emissive material. Standard shader, emissive, nothing spectacular there, right? So just standard material, just some color, okay? And they don't really look like much yet. Right now they're just, uh, they're just 
cubes, right? They're just emissive cubes. They, they're kind of out of place. They don't really fit. But you're going to see that through the use of post-processing effects and 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 uh, and fog and bloom and you know other props and stuff like that, these are going to fit right in. They're going to be unnoticeable, and they're really going to enhance the light of this game. All right, so I've got these emissives here. And so the next thing I'm going to do is I also have these signs, which again came off the asset store there. So we've got some signs. All right, so that's cool. So we have some emissives, we have some signs. Again, they still stand out quite a bit, you know, but we're going to see how we can turn this into something a little bit more um, uh, seamless here shortly. But one of the things that uh, I want to uh, I want to see is if I come down here, I don't see the reflection of these signs. And if I come over here, again, I don't see the reflection because the reflections that I am seeing are part of a, a cube map that was baked, you know, during an early prototype or whatever. It's not, I'm not seeing what I should be seeing here. And, and the reflections are just not right at all. So I'm going to add my very first post-processing effect. So I'm going to go to, I have these PPS volumes, game object, just an empty game object. And I have this global game object underneath. It's on my layer post-processing, which is the layer my camera's set up to look for for post-processing. And I have a post-processing volume on it. Now this is where I actually add my post-processing effects. It's set to global, which means it's going to be applied to my whole scene here. It doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, it has a priority of zero. This is going to be my baseline post-processing uh, volume. And I already have given it a profile. And to do that, all I did was just click new. So this scene is very big. There's a lot of stuff in the Neon project. And it could take a few seconds to create a new profile. So I just already had one on here by clicking new. So nothing spectacular there. All right. So the first effect I'm going to do, I'm going to click Add Effect, Unity, and I'm going to go to Screen Space Reflections. So that's the first thing I want. I want Screen Space Reflection in my scene here. And there we go. So now immediately we're going to see that we've got reflections. However, they're going to flicker a little bit and stuff. So I'm going to, I'm going to start overriding some stuff. So I don't want this to be medium. I'm going to go to Overkill. i got a pretty good machine here. Uh, so I'm going to go to Overkill Quality, and there we go. So now the reflections I'm seeing are the reflections I should be seeing. Right, I'm seeing these emissives. I'm seeing, you know, the reds and signs and, and all that stuff. So that's good. So I'm no longer using that cube map for just all of my reflections. Now I'm actually getting real screen space reflections, which looks pretty darn cool in this scene. All right, so that's, that's a big win right there. All right. And so now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to continue iterating on this concept of these post-processing effects. I'm going to continue iterating on the idea of I want to make a dark, wet, you know, but with bright light scenes, dark contrast, you know, this r futuristic style, Blade Runner-esque, whatever. And one of the k kind of key ideas that I like to have in my mind is that I want to treat this as if I'm looking at this through a lens, right? So the idea behind this is I want, I want as I'm watching the scene, as I'm watching this prototype, that I think, okay, I'm not maybe necessarily there myself. Maybe I am, but still I'm looking at this through a lens. So I want to add a bunch of lens things, right? We see this a lot in cinema. Like if you think about the, the latest Star Trek movies with all the lens flare and, and stuff like that, that's an effect of a lens. And, and so you're, you're watching this as if you're watching it through a lens. And again, that's kind of the effect I want to have. And so I'm just going to be hop over to my game view here uh, as I do this. And so I'm going to add a couple more effects. So first thing I'm going to go to add effect, uh, unity, chromatic aberration. So you got to have some chromatic aberration. It's always fun in most of the kind of futuristic stuff. So I'll click over to my intensity and I could go really extreme with this, right? And I, I don't want it to be extreme. The real, in my mind, the key to these is subtlety, right? So I'm just going to do 0.15. You know, and that just a little bit. Um, I could also, by the way, I could say go to my spectral LUT lookup table. And the post-processing effects have quite a few built in. You know, let me just type LUT there. Uh, and I could do like blue-red separation, green-purple, purple-green, red-blue. Or I could come up with my own. Um, now I'm not going to do any of those, but I could. Uh, but again, just, just a little bit here, just subtlety. Subtlety is key. All right. And so I've got my chromatic aberration. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to set up some, some auto exposure. One of the things I'm trying to achieve right now is I'm trying to sort of even out my canvas, or even out the luminosity of my scene. If anyone does any photography or anything like that, I'm trying to come up with a nice even scene so that when I do my color enhancements, I have a lot of room to play without without going too too dark, too too light, or whatever. All right. 
Uh, and so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go to add effect unity. I'm going to add some auto exposure and auto exposure is going to do that thing that I was talking about. It's going to help me even out the lighting in my scene. It's going to help me uh, specify the, the minimum brightness and darkness and whatever. So for my minimum EVs, I'm just going to drop this down to like negative three, uh, which is going to make my scene very bright because I'm adjusting the luminosity balance of my scene. So nothing can be darker than this minus three EVs, which makes all my darks brighter. Uh, now I want to cap my maximum EVs, how bright everything can be. So I'm going to cap it at four. And now obviously this is way too bright. So I'm just going to adjust my key value here. And so I'm going to bring my key value down to about 1.5, somewhere in there. There we go. And so all that's doing is that's just making my darks a little bit brighter, helping me even out my scene. It's not really affecting my brights too much, but it's helping to even out the darks of my scene, which will be useful later. All right. I'm also going to turn on some eye adaptation, which basically means that if I look at something really bright, everything else around it will be dark. And if I look at something really dark, everything else will be bright. And uh, if I go from really dark room to light room, my eyes will adjust and light room to dark room. So it's a really cool effect uh, for that. So I uh, just have some auto exposure there. We're not going to see it, notice it right now, but we'll, we'll see a little traits of it later. Okay. So the next thing is the thing that, that everyone sort of loves, right? The, the thing that, that makes every game AAA. I'm going to go to Add Effect, Unity, and Bloom, all right? And now is the time I'm going to let you into the super secret trick to making AAA games. Uh, a lot of people don't know this, but the real key is just taking Bloom and just going really high with it. And there you go. The higher your Bloom, the more AAA your game. So there you go. I feel like this is this is good. I think I've achieved a really good level here. Uh, but for the sake of subtlety, I'm going to avoid my, my lesser instincts and I'm going to do something maybe a little bit more pleasing to the eyes, even though that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to drop this down here a bit. So I'm going to maybe just set my intensity to once. Because again, subtlety is key here. And I really want... The, the, the bloom really helps me catch sort of this fog. And we're gonna see how this is gonna play together here later here. So the nice thing about the bloom is it makes this fog really kind of the same color as these light emissive panels. And that's pretty cool there. All right, so I've got some bloom and you know, I can mess around with a few of these. Like sometimes I bring the anamorphic ratio up to, to one, which has just a, a slight change to how the bloom works with the fog and stuff like that. Um, and I can play around with the diffusion a tiny bit if I really want to, it's just how much the light diffuses. All right, so there we go. So I feel pretty good about that fog uh, and, and that bloom and, and that's looking pretty decent here. Uh, I haven't taken the moment to kind of stop and check chat here real quick. I see Matt's been answering a lot of questions, but I'm gonna do that here real quick. Volumes are super cool, uh, tons of great possibility here. Yeah, one of the neat things we're gonna see here soon. So the volumes are nice, but one of the neat things that you can do in Unity is the volumes don't have to be cubes. We can do all sorts of shapes. You're gonna see that here in a little bit. One of my sort of favorite things about the volumes in Unity. Questions about uh, WebGL and post-processing. Not so sure that'll work. WebGL doesn't support a lot of that cool stuff because it tends to be a little bit lower powered. Uh, I think post-processing stack has a volumetric lighting system. Is that true? Uh, no, I don't believe so. They're, they're might be adding one, but the volumetric lighting we're using here is uh, the Blacksmith volumetric lighting from the asset store. 